Hey guys, I decided to um, respond. I was asked a couple questions in my last video, and I, I'm going to answer it. I'm. It's been raining all day, and now the sun's popped out, and it's windy. So I'm sorry if the wind's blowing through this. I'm going to head to the truck, and, uh, and I also respond. You know, so I can't remember who I. I was reading. Through the phone <laughs> while we was doing some work and um, somebody responded that uh, they brought up Jopl Joplin Missouri and um, you know compared that where the community came together y yeah the community did come together but you can't compare a natural disaster like Joplin Missouri to a SHTF situation because there's people all over the country came and helped Joplin out. It just wasn't the citizens of Joplin, Missouri that rebuilt. It was all over, you know, people come from all over and volunteered to, to help. So that's not a... Joplin, Missouri, it's not, that's, that wasn't a shit hit the fan situation. That was just a natural disaster, which happens every day all over the world. The, now, if you want to compare a natural disaster to a SHTF situation, look at Katrina. Look what happened down in there. You know, look what the people done. You know, killing, rioting, you know, looting. Look what the government officials done. Came in and took people's weapons and food and water and tossed them in FEMA camps. And FEMA camps were bad. You know, there you go. Now, that would be more of a shit hit the fan situation than Joplin, Missouri. So, I mean, tell me what you guys think on that one. You know, which one would you consider closer to a SHTF situation, Katrina or Joplin, Missouri? But um, but I was asked um, a couple questions. What would I would I help if I knew a person was a prepper and they got overran at their area and came and asked me for help? Probably not. And here's why. I've got enough supplies laid out to last my family a year, two years, somewhere around there. If I let another family in, I'm basically cutting my... Say I, I have enough food and everything set back for a year. If I let another family come in, I'm cutting my food in half. So... Within six months, I'm going to be worrying about where I'm going to be getting food to, to feed my boys. Here's examples. Say you go hunting one time a week and you get a few animals. If you let other people in, they're going to, you're going to have to hunt more than one time a week. You're going to have to go out more to get more to hunt more and say you get two deer and that would last you a year well if you let a family come in maybe you have to get four or five deer in order to have enough meat to last a year you're taking more chances being out being seen and you're also depleting the animals you have in the area because you're hunting more People don't think about that. Just like trapping and snaring. Say you set out 10 traps and you get enough meat, you know, enough animals in those traps to take your family for a week. You let another family come in there, you're going to have to double your traps. And you're going to be out more trapping, bringing more attention to yourself. And you're also depleting the animal resources quicker by trapping and hunting more. Same as fishing. Say you set out 10 trout lines 
and that's enough for your family, you and your family, to survive on. If you let somebody else in, you're going to have to double, and you're going to have to be out there more. Again, making yourself more visible to people, using up the resources of fish or crawdads or whatever you're trying to get. And it's going, you're going to use more of that resource up where if you wasn't helping, you would have the extra resource. Another example, say you have 10 cords of firewood and that's enough to get you for, through for a year, you know, cooking off of, heating off of, everything. If you let other people come in, you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to spend more time away from your family by cutting wood making more noise then you're going to have you're going to have to have more smoke more fires because you got more people to keep warm that's at nighttime that's going to more smoke's going to be in the air more food smells going to be in the air more light source is going to be out vi more visible at nighttime the more people you have water the same way say you go every day and you get two five gallon buckets full of water and that does you and your family a day if you bring other people in you're going to have to bring in four to five five gallon buckets of water in and that's going to take more wood to boil that much water do you, do you guys see where i'm going it's putting more worry more stress more work on somebody letting somebody in and another thing okay they got over say they got overran and they ran and they left their preps say you find out they're coming your way in the in the marauders or looters or gangs whatever it was that raided them shows up at your door do you think that people that you let in and help and fed is going to stand their ground or are they going to run and find another group to help them because they ran the first time and that's their stuff do you think they're going to stand and fight and help protect your stuff when they wouldn't even do it to their stuff no they're going to shag butt and they're going to be gone like grease lightning going to leave you hanging high and dry after you help them they don't care they'll move on to the next group Now, I've heard people say, you know, they would help the kids. Okay, honestly, the kids nowadays, most of them have no morals, no ethics, no responsibility. They don't care. They just care for their self. And if you let some kids in and their friends come up, to want some food and you don't help their friends, they'll turn around and shoot you because they don't care. Especially the ones that grew up in the inner city with the gang violence. Now, I'm not saying one race. I'm saying all races. Whites, blacks, Mex Mexicans, um, Asians, you know, the ones that grew up in the inner city that's rough. I grew up in a rough neighborhood. And so, I do know, you know, yeah. taking a kid from the inner city and you take a kid from the country, they got total different mindsets, they got total different thoughts, they got total different actions. But those kids would turn on you in a heartbeat and blow you away because you're not helping their friends. Or say they were in a gang and they got separated and their gang members come up. Let's turn around and shoot you just to help their gang member because that's their family. No matter how good you were to them, they'll still shoot you in the back of the head. But people don't think that. You know, these are some examples I'm giving you that most people probably have never thought of. And um, think about what I said. And think about each subject I said. How much harder would that make it on you? How much more you're going to be putting yourself out there to be noticed by people by helping them? And say you want 
help them. You know, you won't let them in, but you give them a backpack full of food. Okay? And they go on their merry way. Say so they get up with another group and they tell this other group, yeah, so-and-so gave me this. He wouldn't let me in, but he gave me this. And these other groups going to figure, oh, he's got food. And they're going to come to get you and your food. Or say they run out of food and they come back wanting more food. They expect you to give them more food. And if you don't, they start trouble. Do you see where I'm getting at, guys? You know, you know, there's a lot of people saying, oh, it would be a hard decision. Not really. It would not be a hard decision if you really cared about your family. You know, because you're going to have to put your family first. You're going to have to make sure they got the food, they got the water, they got the shelter, they got the fire, they got the medical. And if you help somebody else, you're depleting, you're taking that away from them. Let it be a kid, let it be a woman, let it be a man, let it be a complete family. You're cutting your resources. You might, it might be like last year here. The trapping season and hunting season sucked so bad because it got cold, hot, cold, hot. We had 70 degree winter weather in September, in December here, right before Christmas. The hunting season sucked. The trapping season sucked. So, you know, and like this year, the garden, my garden, it's producing somewhat, but a lot of it's the the roots are rottening because we get so much rain and you know we're gonna have to buy store-bought vegetables in the winter time because we didn't get a lot this year so far because of the rains rotten the roots rotten the plants and uh, but people don't think about that they think I got the garden seeds I can hunt I can fish I can trap but you if you let more people in you got to do more work and more work means more stress. More stress means you're tired, you're irritable, you know, worrying about how to provide for other people. Then you got to worry about those other people's actions. You know, that's what a lot of people don't understand. And a lot of people can't understand why I could be so cold hearted. But you got to think outside the box. And think about other scenarios that could happen. And in a SHTF situation, those things that could happen most likely will happen and double, be worse. So, um, you know, like I said, I was asked that question, you know, what I would do. And that's my answer. I wouldn't help. And I just laid out why I wouldn't help. Even if they were a prepper family. You know, that's my reasons. So, um, think about what I said. Really listen to the video and think about what I said and respond. You know, give me a comment on your thoughts. You know, have you thought about any of those scenarios I just said? Or have you not thought about them? You know, just let me know what I said in the scenarios I put up. Did that make a difference in your mind about helping somebody because you didn't think about those scenarios? Because um, like I said, we're all on here to help one another. We're here to learn. We're here to share ideals. We're on here to share thoughts. Now, I will say this. If something was to happen... And any one of my sub-friends was in my area, we would all get together, and I've said it once before, we would have one hell of a group. Because my true sub-friends on here, they're like me. We would all band together, we would join together, we would work, and we would make one killer community now i will say that i would help my sub friends 
more than I would help a neighbor down the road here. Because my sub friends on here, they show me, you know, yeah, this is what's got to be done and this and this. And they're preparing and they understand what's going on. Neighbor down the road might not care, might go spend two or three hundred dollars on BS crap a week instead of putting back. You know, I'm not going to help that type of person, but I will help a sub friend because they're on here the same for the same reason I am to to learn, to share knowledge, to gain knowledge, and to help one another. Now, that's a big difference, you know, helping a neighbor. Then I'm saying I, I'm saying I won't help my neighbors, but I'll help my sub friends because my sub friends have shown me through their comments and through the phone conversations I've had with them and stuff, that they're like me. And that's the only type of people I'll help, people who's like me. And I got a lot of sub-friends on there who's like me. And, um, because I thought I was just one in a million. But come to find out, I'm pretty common. You know, and I I'm thankful, you know, because like I said, I've got some great sub-friends and I'm really appreciative. And my true sub-friends... I would help them out in a heartbeat. No if and buts about it. You know, I've got them in Canada. I've got them here in the States. I've got them in Sweden. I've got them in England. You know, I've got some killer sub-friends. And if we could all get together during a shit-hit-the-fan situation, shit, it'd be like all of us laying back on the beach sipping margaritas. Because we'd have it pretty well made. But guys, tell me what you guys think, uh, and um, leave a comment. I just went and done some shopping. I'm going to be making another video on what I found, which is pretty cool. I've never seen them before. I make my own, but I bought two of them. And I think you guys, it'd be interesting to, to buy a few to set back. But I'll make a video on that later on tonight and put it up. Until then, guys, be safe. Keep preparing, and let me know what you guys think. Bye for now, guys.